Assalamu alaikum my dear students. This is again Dr. Muhammad Shafiq, uh, lecturer Department of Islamic and Pakistan Studies course. And the course I'm teaching you is Introduction to Logic and the course code is PHI101. Today uh, is lecture number 15 and we are going to discuss what are the fallacies of relevance. Before starting, what are the fallacies of relevance? I'll just give you a brief, brief uh, recap about fallacy. What is fallacy? Sometimes an argument seems to be valid and sound, but in reality, it is not so. It involves a violation of some rule of logic which is not apparent and which can be detected only on close examination. Such a piece of unsound reasoning is called fallacy. When the premise of an argument fails to support its conclusion, we call the argument a fallacious argument. So a fallacy is an argument which appears to be valid, but, it, but in fact it is not so. And it can mislead us. So, as we know, logic is the study of those methods and principles which distinguish between correct reasoning and incorrect reasoning. So we need to identify incorrect reasoning as well in order to be able to present our argument effectively and validly. Now, what are the fallacies of relevance? As it is evident from the name of uh, these fallacies, and I've given you a brief idea in my previous lecture, there are uh, four classifications of fallacies. Uh, but the first group of fallacies are very important and called fallacies of relevance. Why these are important? Because uh, these are very frequently used in our daily lives. So we need to be aware of these fallacies. Fallacies of relevance are bald mistakes. That is to say, they are the product of the missing connection between the premise and conclusion. And since the connection is missing, the premises cannot establish the truth of conclusion drawn. But the premise may look relevant to the conclusion psychologically to the reader or hearer. Each fallacy of this kind has traditional and modern names uh, which will be discussed one by one. So the fallacies of relevance uh, in simple words are those, those fallacies when they uh, are those arguments rather where we cannot see or we cannot find any relevance between premise and conclusion or between the premises themselves. So there's a missing connection or missing link between the premise and conclusion or in, in, in between the premises. But apparently these uh, arguments look uh, quite valid because uh, such fallacies or such arguments are quite tricky. So now we are going to move uh, on and see what are these five fallacies of relevance one by one. So the first one is called appeal to emotion or argument ad populum. A very common fallacy uh, and quite frequently used, uh, especially in our uh, marketing, uh, selling the products, as well as by our uh, politicians and some religious people, 
So uh, these are the, as it is evident from the name of, of this fallacy, which is called the appeal to emotion. These are the fallacies uh, which are basically the product of uh, emotions. When an argument is based upon emotions rather than facts, it is called argument ad populum or appeal to emotion. Like every demagogue and propagandist rely upon such kind of appeal to emotion to fulfill their purposes. Like for example, you might have seen on your television that there are certain products, for example, uh, they assign or, or they, uh, for example, in, in advertising companies or on the, on the television, we see that they They, they, they claim uh, some soft drinks, for example, cola, uh, while hiring a very popular celebrity of, of a sports or from a, a media, from, from movies or television, uh, who walks in front of the screen while having the sip of that drink and claiming to be very uh, happy and, and refreshed by this kind of uh, drink. Now, why do they hire such kind of celebrities and why do they pay them so huge amounts? Because it's, it's, it's not something which cannot be performed by anyone but because they want to use the emotions of the people in order to sell their product as much as they can, they would hire uh, a sports personality or uh, from uh, entertainment industry, or maybe uh, if you're watching an ad of, of, of a shampoo, for example, a beautiful girl would walk in and having a nice, long, uh, shiny hair would claim to be using such and such shampoo. Why? Because they want to attract people. They want to attract the viewers. And once they attract them, they can play with their emotions. So if, for example, if, if uh, Afridi comes and says, and having a sip of Pepsi says that, or claims that when he drinks Pepsi, he hits the shorts. And people are just following that, they'll just go crazy and buy Pepsi. This is a prime example of, of appeal to emotion. Why? Because people are attracted towards these celebrities and then they are so emotional that they, they don't even think about the ingredients of that drink that it has got so much sugar in it that if someone drinks it regularly he would face so many medical complications so many diseases, let alone being a fit sportsman like a freebie. So it's like, it's, it's just like, you know, using this, there is no connection between premise and conclusion. Premise says that a freebie drinks Pepsi. Conclusion says that is why he hits sixes. Now, drinking Pepsi does not logically entail that you can hit sixes. Similarly, uh, as someone has said that uh, patriotism is the last refuge of scoundrel. I mean, when uh, obviously you're not that old, neither me, but uh, if you hear the stories on the television about this 
uh, the war between Pakistan and India in 1965, uh, you, you would have heard that there was a singer, a legend singer called Blue Jaha, who used to sing songs for the people that made it Nagme Tumhare Liye Hai. And people used to, you know, uh, carry bombs with them and going under the beneath, underneath of, of those tanks of the enemy and blowing them up. What was it? It was just uh, playing with the emotions. I'm not saying that it was something negative, but if you think for a second, if someone has lost his life, so what does this country mean to him? And what does this, you know, all geographical boundaries mean to him? Nothing. Once he's, he's, he died, he died. <coughs> So uh, we need to be very careful when examining certain arguments that uh, this kind of appeal to emotion fallacy is quite frequently used uh, also by, by the politicians when they come and play with the emotions of the people in order to take votes from them. And after winning the election, you, can, you won't see them for five years. So uh, they play with the emotions. It is very easy to hijack emotions of the people and then use them as religious demagogue has done so many times uh, in the name of, you know, uh, in, in, in the name of protecting their religious beliefs, uh, such as demonstrations for the, uh, against Tohin e Salat. But what happens, people go out and they just uh, damage their own properties uh, rather than going in, taking in hand, uh, you know, uh, stopping uh, uh, those people who are committing this uh, blasphemy uh, by, by, by force, uh, rather than they, they just go and damage their own properties. So this uh, kind of fallacy is quite uh, normal and quite uh, often used in our daily life. The second one, uh, uh, our argument as misericordium, misericordium. When an argument relies upon generosity or altruism and seeking mercy, it is called fallacy of, a, fallacy of appeal to pity. For example, beggars using this kind of argument to gain sympathies and fulfill their financial goal. Now, if you look closely, pity is also a kind of emotion, obviously. But this fallacy specifically uh, targets uh, the emotion of pity. Normally, uh, we have seen so many times in our daily lives that uh, once uh, someone does not have an answer to an argument, he always hangs on to the uh, pity and he uses this card. I mean, I remember once uh, I, I was uh, driving in the shower in, 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 in a very crowded place and I was driving quite carefully because my car, obviously I loved my car, uh, it was quite expensive. So, I was just passing by and uh, one of that Chin Chi drivers uh, was, who happened to be racing on the road, a very crowded road, uh, just hit my car and when I stopped him and I grabbed him that who's going to pay for the damages and when he realized that he cannot escape. Uh, he tried to use this pity card. And he said that he's a very uh, poor guy and he cannot afford anything and he hasn't got any money and his children are dying of hunger and he's got sick parents at home, blah, 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 all sorts of things. And then people started uh, also uh, favoring him and requesting me to just let him go. But I knew for the fact that it is just a, a, a fallacy, appeal to pity. I mean, there is no connection between 
the premise and conclusion the premise while driving your chinchi recklessly uh, and the conclusion says he is a poor man so poverty doesn't have to do anything with driving recklessly and hitting someone on the road uh, similarly uh, there is an incident written in the book that once uh, a person uh, who was on trial in a court in in united states uh when he was charged with the murder uh, the judge uh, asked him that what is uh, uh, when he was uh, finally charged for the murder uh, he was asked by the judge if he had any uh, last wish so uh, the person replied that uh, he he basically he wants to he he wants the judge to have some mercy upon him because uh, uh because you know he's uh, an orphan and as it happened the murder he was charged for was that of his own father so he was trying to use the same card for you know to have mercy this is very funny uh so normally when people are stuck when they don't have a reply or answer to an argument they normally use this pity and it is quite common in our society so this is the second uh, kind of fallacy of relevance or the appeal to force or argument as baculum uh, this is a typical fallacy uh we are normally when we run out of arguments we start using our force when an argument is based upon use of force rather than reason is called fallacy of appeal to force religious persecutions and national interests are prime example of such fallacy i mean obviously you might have seen on the media so many times that if someone asks a question from any authority in 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 the country they try to shut him uh, up by saying that it is against national interest to talk about these things and you will be prosecuted uh, in 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 certain cases also religious persecutions i mean they normally uh, when you try to question their certain uh, beliefs they hold if you try to question them uh, you will be charged for blasphemies and uh, all sorts of things and then nobody would even inquire whether it was true or false and you will be persecuted on, in, in the name of religion and it, uh, we have seen so many cases in our society Uh, the simple uh, example would be like if you are sitting home and watching the telly or doing something and uh, one of your younger sibling comes uh, walks into the room and comes to you and ask a question from you which uh, maybe which do we we of 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 that kind of question you don't have any answer or you or you don't even know the answer you just try to shut him up by saying that just go away and don't disturb me instead of answering logically to his question so it is also very common especially in our society where you know uh, people normally believe in might is right because uh, normally uh, poor people weaker people are charged with the uh, so many you know offenses uh which are very minor in nature while uh, the stronger would even get away with murders and stuff and we have seen uh, certain news items in in, in our uh, television on daily basis and newspapers that there are so many criminals on the run and they are they are just you know enjoying their freedom and liberty because they are stronger than the uh, 
the system, legal system. So this is the appeal to force again, a missing link between premise and conclusion. In premise, obviously you cannot answer logically the question of your sibling. So you try to use the force, and try to shut him up by force, just telling him to get out of the room and do not disturb him. So this is the third kind of fallacy of relevance. Uh, called argument against person or argument as hominem. Again, it's very common in our society. Uh, when an argument is based upon inflicting personal damages rather than reason, when it tries to target the opponent rather than responding to the argument rationally, it is called fallacy of argument against person. Personal abuse during an argument is prime example of such fallacy. Or uh, normally, uh, when you ask someone that it's it's very common in our society when you ask someone that why you are not studying, why you are not work working hard for your studies, uh, why you are just wasting your time, uh, the response you will get uh, would not be that this is the reason why I'm not studying, but it would be that, oh yes, as if you yourself was a great intellectual or something like that. Or if you ask someone why you are not going for prayers, they would say, yes, we know you are a haji star. So all these kinds of uh, arguments which attack the personality of, of uh, someone who asks questions, that basically is a fallacy called uh, argument against person. Uh, just a few days ago, I was just having a conversation, uh, rather a debate with some of my friends upon political situation. And uh, when they just got clueless and they couldn't answer my argument logically, they started attacking me by uh, my qualification that you are uh, not qualified in political science rather you are qualified in philosophy so you don't have any right to you know comment upon certain political scenarios so all these kind of examples we can see around us uh, throughout the day uh, these are called argument against person because uh, there again there is no link between a premise and conclusion. Premise would say that why you're not working hard and conclusion says that yes, I know you are an intellectual. So there is no link between, you know, uh, the, the person who you asking from that why you are not working hard and you being an intellectual, <laughs> there is no logical connection between them. So that is why the premise and conclusion both are irrelevant. Hence it is called fallacy of relevance and argument against person. Last but not the least, uh, that is obviously called an irrelevant conclusion or some people call it fallacy of missing the point and its traditional name is ignoratio elanchi. When an argument is, misses the point and draws a totally different conclusion than the rational one, it is based upon a confusion in reasoning which may or may not be realized by author himself when premises say something else while the conclusion drawn is totally irrelevant. For example, uh, if I tell you, for example, I, if I tell my students, or normally do, that if you work hard, you will pass the exam, and uh, if you work hard, you will be successful in your life. But one may come to me, one of the students may come to me and say that complain that I've been working really hard but uh, still I failed my exam. And if I ask how, they might say that I've been working hard, I've been running in the uh, playground of the university like 
suppose 10 circles a day and I've been going up and down to the hill uh, and wandering around different departments and that is really tough job especially in uh, this spring semester in this scorching heat but still I failed the exam now this is totally irrelevant conclusion because by working hard we mean basically to study to read the books and to clear your concepts of, 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 of different topics of your course rather than running around that is that's that's obviously that is working hard but that is in a different context that could be working hard for your uh, being a good sportsman but it is useless in your studies or uh, you, we, may, we may take the example of, of someone uh, suppose I, I, I just come back from the uni and the sitting home my wife brings me dinner and I'm quite hungry when I try when I start eating it uh, I just realize that uh, it is too salty for me and when I complain to my wife, she would say that, oh, I have worked so hard, but you, you just, you know, you don't like the food I cook. I worked so hard because I went to the market, I bought this stuff, and uh, I have been in the kitchen all day in this scorching heat, and now you are saying that the food, food is not taste, uh, food is tasteless. Now, there is no doubt she, she has worked hard to cook the food, but that does not necessarily mean that the food would taste good because the taste of food is entirely a different thing than uh, being in the kitchen all day in scorching heat. So, again, there is missing link between the premise and conclusion. So, such kind of fallacies are normally they are called fallacy of irrelevant conclusion or missing the point. So these were the five uh, fallacies of uh, relevance. If you have any questions by any chance or any comments, uh, please do let me know so that we can discuss it before uh, moving on to the next topic in our next lecture. And these are the recommended uh, readings for you. Uh, and I've also given you some handouts in the class. So give it a read and let me know if you have any problem. Uh, till then, thank you very much. Uh, take care and Allah Hafiz.